Item number SCP-3720, Object Class Euclid, Special Containment Procedures. Mobile Task Force IOTA-10, damn fit, is to monitor civilian police department records worldwide for unsolved homicide, assault, or stalking cases that could indicate SCP-3720 activity. If SCP-3721 is confirmed to be targeting an individual, said individual is to be taken into Protective Foundation custody. If possible, SCP-3721 manifestations should be non-lethally subdued and taken in for interrogation. Archive Special Containment Procedures Site 121's daily perimeter patrols and security are to be doubled from the standard of a site containing primarily safe class anomalies. All delivery crews entering Site 121 are to undergo additional screening before being allowed through Site 121's main gate. When the manifestation of SCP-3721 is detected on Site-121 grounds, Site-121 is to initiate lockdown procedure Longshore. Uninvited guests and security personnel should attempt to capture SCP-3721 alive for interrogation. If Non-lethal takedown is impractical or impossible. Security personnel are authorized to use deadly force. Patrol routes are to be reconfigured on a bi-weekly basis. Description SCP-3720 refers to a phenomena wherein an individual will be targeted for murder by SCP-3721. SCP-3721 manifests as a middle-aged Caucasian male, and exhibits no anomalous traits or abilities apart from its ability to spontaneously manifest and de-manifest at will. SCP-3721 typically manifests wearing some form of civilian clothing appropriate with the region it appears in, and carrying various tools and weapons to help it locate, confront, and kill its target. Here after referred to as SCP-3722. See Addendum 3721 for details regarding SCP-3721 activities. If SCP-3721 is killed before killing SCP-3722, its remains and belongings will demanifest after several minutes and a new manifestation of SCP-3721 will appear after one to three weeks within the approximate vicinity of SCP-3722. This new manifestation will continue to attempt to kill SCP-3722, apparently retaining the knowledge and experience of its previous iterations. Once SCP-3722 is dead, either through SCP-3721's direct action or other causes. SCP-3721 will manifest elsewhere in the world after an extended period of time, targeting a new individual. SCP-3720 first came to the Foundation's attention after SCP-3721 began periodically assaulting Site-121 in 2005. Since its discovery, SCP-3720 is believed to be responsible for anywhere from 7 to beep deaths worldwide. Addendum 3721 Partial Manifestation Log Note, as many of SCP-3721's incursions involved avoiding security patrols and surveillance equipment, concrete footage and eyewitness accounts were not always available. As such, the reconstructed offense portion of these logs is merely the forensics team leading theory as to what occurred based on environmental context and whatever footage and eyewitness account were available. Manifestation 1 Date July 12th, 2005 Reconstructed offense SCP-3721 blockades the main road leading to Site-121 using a fallen tree. 
watching an inbound delivery truck to a stop. SCP-3721 incapacitates the lightly armed delivery crew, leaving them unconscious on the side of the road, stealing a uniform and ID. SCP-3721 commandeers the truck and attempts to pose as a delivery man at Site 121's gates. SCP-3721 is allowed to enter, but is recognized as an imposter by the loading bay staff. Security is alerted, and SCP-3721 is terminated while trying to flee. Upon its corpse demanifesting, Entity is designated SCP-3720 and presumed neutralized. Site-121 Security Updates Gate security staff reprimanded for failing to closely scrutinize the presented credentials. Delivery crews en route to Site-121 are now accompanied by two armed security staff. Manifestation 2 Date July 20th, 2005 Reconstructed Defense SCP-3721 attempts to cut a hole in Site 121's perimeter fence using a pair of bolt cutters. SCP-3721 is spotted by border controls during this activity and is terminated while attempting to flee. Upon the manifestations, SCP-3720 is reclassified as Euclid. Site 121 Security Updates Perimeter security staff increased by 30% in anticipation of further incursions. Manifestation 5 Date September 1st, 2005 Reconstructed Defense Just after nightfall, SCP-3721 ambushes and incapacitates two border control officers using hand-to-hand -hand combat and a small catapult. SCP-3721 cuts a hole in Site-121's perimeter fence and proceeds deeper into the site on foot. SCP-3721 is spotted on camera unsuccessfully attempting to enter the staff dormitory's front entrance. Security personnel are dispatched and SCP-3721 is terminated while attempting to engage the response team using the aforementioned cattle pod. Site 121 security updates. Chain link perimeter fence reinforced with a layer of sheet metal. Manifestation 8. Date November 12th, 2005. Reconstructed defense. SCP 3721 remotely detonates a small amount of explosives in deforested area near Site 121's eastern entrance. While the bulk of Site-121 security staff are preoccupied investigating the blast and reinforcing the eastern gate, SCP-3721 uses a rudimentary zip-line device to travel over the western end of the perimeter fence. SCP-3721 attempts to use a makeshift-shaped explosive to enter the staff dormitories through a wall connected to a vacant supply closet. SCP-3721 is killed when the shaped charge doesn't HP maturely, leaving the wall moderately damaged. Site-121 security updates. Staff dormitory's wall is repaired. Several watchtowers are constructed around Site-121's perimeter fence. Security patrols are assigned to the staff dormitory's exterior. Manifestation 12. Date, March 24th. 2006. Reconstructed Offense. SCP-3721 spent an indeterminate amount of time digging a small underground tunnel, approximately 80 meters in length and 1.5 meters in diameter, from the wooded area surrounding Site-121 to a maintenance tunnel directly beneath Site-121. SCP-3721 navigates the maintenance tunnel using a miniaturized tranquilizer gun to incapacitate the three unarmed custodial staff it encounters along the way before ascending a stairwell to the ground floor of Site-121's staff dormitories. SCP-3721 is recognized by Researcher Beep, who uses her personal sidearm 
to incapacitate the entity with a shot to its left shin. Security teams are scrambled, and SCP-3721 is stabilized and taken into Foundation custody. See Interview Log 3721. Site 121 Security Update Cameras are installed in various regions of Site 121's underground maintenance tunnels. Several members of Site 121 Administration propose temporary relocation of staff living quarters to a different, more secure location. Interview Log 3721 Date March 24th, 2004 Interviewer Dr. Perino Interviewed SCP-3721 Forward Following its capture at the hands of Site-121 Security, SCP-3721 had its wounds treated and its gear confiscated and was handcuffed and sent to an on-site interrogation room. Begin now! Why have you been continually attempting to infiltrate this compound, specifically the staff dormitories? Well, decided to kill one of your guys, Beep. How by whom? Uh, you won't know her. Kinda part of the problem to that. Indulge me. The name Vokai ever present and ever watchful ring any bells? I'm afraid not. Told ya. Why does this Vokai want to be dead? He, uh, he broke a face of hers. Well, dedicated to her. And that warrants execution. In my opinion, no, but uh, Felka likes her pottery. It uh, doesn't have much left. Can we contact this individual? She doesn't talk to humans, uh, aside from me. Says it's below her. Hmm. Felka is non-human then. Yup. Uh, what will you describe for us? Not a good word for it in our language, I'm afraid. Are uh, you non-human as well? I'm just as human as you are, Chief. Your apparent reincarnations would suggest otherwise. Well, that's just part of the job. I assume that you're referring to your job as an assassin. Is that a fitting title? Yep. The whole disappearing and reappearing act just something of a new higher bonus. Hmm. There are others like you. Other hitmen? Uh, yeah, but none of them's human like me, as far as I know. Part of why I took the job. I'm afraid I don't follow. There's always going to be folks out there who want someone dead, and there's always folks who are willing to make that someone dead for the right price. Difference is how many other folks will get hurt in the process, understand? Somewhat. Continue, please. My, uh, co-workers couldn't get two shakes of piss about collateral damage. They ain't human. So what do they care if some extra humans get squashed along the way? You tried to avoid such collateral. Figured I'd make that abundantly clear. I could've come in here guns blazing. But I tried to do things a bit more civil-like. Consider yourself lucky I got hired instead of from the mean freakers. Which brings me to my proposal. And what's that? Hand over beep before other folks get hurt. Excuse me? I know it don't sound all that appealing, but I've been at this for months now. Well, Kai's getting impatient. She doesn't have a lot of influence anymore, so she turned to me first, since I work real cheap. But eventually she's going to save up enough to hire one of the mean triggers around, and that's bad news for everyone around here. We're not going to hand over a man to be executed based on your vague threats. It ain't a threat, Chief. Look, he's a dead man. Don't matter if I get him, or the next guy felt Kyle hires get him. He's marked, understand? All that's up to debate is how many other folks are going to die in the process. There's no evidence to back up any of your claims. This could simply be a ploy to make your job easier. If I wanted my job to be easy, I just drew with some chlorine gas and pumped it into every building in this place. But I ain't looking for the easy way. 
You chose a strange line of work if you value human life this much. Look, asshole, there's always going to be people paying good money to have other people killed. I can't stop the goddamn system, so I might as well do what I can to take bits away from the reckless crapheads who pick up these sorts of contracts. <sighs> My head's starting to ache from sticking around this long. Just... Let's think about what I told you, alright? My way ain't exactly pretty, but it beats the alternative. SCP-3721 abruptly dematerializes. End Addendum 3722. Following interview 3721, it was decided that researcher Beep be transported to an off-site safe house to minimize the risk towards other Foundation staff while MTF Upsilon 8 adherents attempted to contact Entity of Interest 3721 Valkai. Upsilon 8's attempts were unsuccessful, and over the course of the next several weeks, SCP-3721 staged multiple assaults on the safe house, all of which were thwarted by security personnel. No Foundation casualties were sustained during this time. On June 3rd, 2006, despite the lack of nearby fault lines, an earthquake estimated magnitude 7.0 to 7.5 decimated the safe house, killing researcher Beep and four of the six assigned security staff. The earthquake was localized entirely to the safe house and approximately 1.5 square kilometers of the surrounding forest. <sighs> 